Hello guys, welcome to Bike Matters. My name is Alex and we've got this, the Harley Sportster S. Fantastic bike to look at. Is it fun to ride? Let's find out. So the Sportster family is a long running family for Harley Davidson. It was launched in 1957, it's been about for a long old time. And this 2021 update of the Sportster lineup has basically reframed what Harley Davidson want. They've basically said this is the sort of entry level Harley Davidson into the lineup. But with that Revolution Max engine, 1252cc V-twin, it's quite a beastly entry point into a massive market. Naturally, the style is subjective, but I think it looks stunning, quite modern and a modern touch on the sports, the lineup of past. And what really jumps out of you, alongside with the motor and the huge exhaust, are the massive tires at the front. Huge. You've got basically a rear tire at the front and when you're riding it, you definitely feel like you've got a huge tire at the front because it takes quite a lot of effort to move and lean into corners. But once you get used to it, it's bang on and it's really enjoyable. Did also see on the Harley Davidson website that the front and rear tire are about 350 pounds each. So if you're looking to get these tires replaced down the road, it's going to be quite an expensive one. So the prices start for this one. This is Vivid Black and it's 15895. You can then also look at a few of the other options in terms of white, grey, and blue with Harley Davidson's own terming on those. And that's 16,270 pounds. On the road prices are gonna be on top of that, so I believe you're spending a little bit of money on top. But as an entry level bike for Harley Davidson, I think that's not too bad really. It's not too over the top pricey, but it is still a Harley Davidson price point. And naturally you can go into the accessories catalog and throw on all manner of bits that are just gonna bump this price up hugely. And if you wanna wash it, you can get the Harley Davidson official bucket for 55 pounds, Christ. Moving on, we're gonna talk about the engine. So it's the 1252cc V-twin. It's a huge Revolution Max motor and it's in just incredible fun to ride about with, especially on this bike, 228 kilograms wet or thereabouts. And it just absolutely flies. Your feet are forward, your arms are forward and it's a nice like, aggressive mean ride position and when you crank onto the throttle and activate that belt drive on the rear wheel it just absolutely flies it doesn't sound as meaty as i thought it would do but you've got euro 5 to blame for that Okay, just jumping also into the engine just to add in, I forgot to say this, it's actually a stressed member in the frame. So it holds a lot of the weight there and that allows Harley Davidson to reduce some of the weight. So overall, the weight itself is 228 kilograms and that's when it's in running order. So full capacity with the 11.8 litre tank filled. This bike just absolutely sends it. In terms of power figures, 121 brake horsepower and 125 newton meters of torque. So firing up the V-twin, you know that you've got that power there. And though when you're starting it up on a cold day, the first, say, five minutes of the ride, it feels quite cold and like it's gonna cut out quite a bit. Once it's up to temperature and you're rolling nicely, it's bang on for me. You've got a few rider modes to play about with as well, as well as custom mode. So there's sport, road, rain, and then you've got two customizable modes that you can set however you want. I've set A as a bit of a silly mode that's got loads of throttle response and basically the sports characteristics everywhere. But then it's got a little bit more of the sort of comfort aspect relied into there as well, because you need as much comfort as possible when you're riding this. Now, I've ridden this two up with my girlfriend. She was on the back for a bit. So she gave me a quick rundown of how she felt on there. There's no grab rail, so she had nothing to grab onto. But as standard, this bike doesn't come with any pillion bits. You need to add on, I think it's 400 and something pounds to get the pillion accessories on here in terms of the seat, the backrest and the pegs. No grab rail and the backrest is a little bit far away. So she was holding on to me because she had nothing else to hold on to. And the distance between her back and the backrest was quite sizable. And because you've got nothing to grab onto, to me, that's a bit of a confusing one, really. She also said that when you were riding along, the bumps at the rear were so noticeable. You can adjust the rear with the preload but we went over a couple of pretty minimal bounces. And because it's only 30 odd mil of travel, she just basically got rocketed up and landed in the seat. And it was a bit of a scary one for her, bless her. But everything was fine, everything was cool. And the seat height is 753 mil. Front suspension is all customizable as well. You can link it all up and you can do the preload and I believe the compression, but you've only got 90 mil of travel to play with. So overall, I mean, when you want to feel the road as a rider, 
the Harley Sports Rest certainly makes you feel the road because there's just so little in the means of travel and the suspension that you feel everything. It's like a Ryanair landing where it's just absolutely firm and you know that you've hit the ground because it's so firm. But for the most part, if you stay away from the bumpy roads, it's really nice to play with. It's really smooth and with the big tires, it just cruises calmly. You've got to really feed it into the corners and there's a lot of counter steering going on to actually get it in the right place for a corner. And there's a little bit of mental work to actually get into how this bike rides and how it sort of feels on the road. But once you get over that hurdle, especially mentally how to think how you're going to ride this bike it's really good fun to ride naturally as a cruiser you're going to be doing a lot of town city stuff as well as then going to cafes and then doing some back roads bits being on the dual carriageway on this one and just basically all manner of riding especially commuting to work and stuff like that and it's been so easy to ride and so enjoyable to just get on and go for it it does coax you into riding a little bit quick sometimes with that motor and you know there may have been some alleged top speed runs on the cards but for the most part it's very cruisy. Just jump on it and have a nice cruise and just feel like you're a proper Harley rider, which is always a bit of a plus point. I've also shown this bike to a mate of mine who's a real big Harley fan. He's got loads of chopped up Harleys and he's basically running a garage where he does all sorts of Harley work. And he said instantly, this bike could be, looks like it'd be great fun to chop up. So Harley fans, both myself as a sort of distant Harley fan that's been riding this thinking, yeah, this is really nice with family members that ride Harleys to even people who are well into their Harleys and chop them up. Seems like this ticks all of the boxes. So there's a few bits that aren't so gleaming on this bike. It's not the perfect bike by any means. You've got six gears, but I found it quite awkward to sometimes get into gear and actually make use of those six gears. Of course, feet forward, it's always gonna be a little bit different anyway, but it just feels like the traditional like clunky box that you've got to work with. Again, Harley sometimes point at that being like a sort of selling point that you really feel like you're working with the bike and getting it to do what you want. But when you work with a seamless gearbox, which just goes up and down effortlessly and can find neutral when you want it and not between say third and fourth, that's what you want. You want a seamless gearbox. And for me, it was just a little bit of a niggle. Moving on to the switch gear in general, I feel like there's just a little bit too much going on. You've got on the right side, you've got your music controls and your mode button. Mode button's fine where it's placed near the uh, throttle, absolutely fine. But then you move to the left side and there's just buttons everywhere. You've got a heated grip button, fair enough. Then you've got a sort of mode cycling button which shows you different bits of the display in terms of range and then your trip A, trip B odometer. And that could just be replaced with up and down buttons which also operate the same menu. Then you've got a sort of different menu bit that can show your map when you download the Harley Davidson bit to your smartphone. And you can then go into map and like music control and stuff like that. But left and right would do that same job as well. Then you've got a home button, fair enough. And you've got an okay button, fair enough again. But I just feel like there's a little bit too much going on. The TFT da uh, dash display is four inches circular and it's all color and full HD. So it looks really nice when you're riding about on there. And as I say, you can navigate into some turn by turn navigation, looking at your music and looking at sort of the bike bits on there. Absolutely fine and normal but you only get your range. You don't get any sort of current consumption figures or anything that really dives into how the bike is operating outside of just the range that you've got. So diving into the tank, it's an 11.8 litre tank. You get around about 100 miles per tank and that depends on how you ride. So when I first got this, jumped on it, went for a little hoon about, and I think I used about 40 miles worth of fuel and that was basically half a tank. So I'm thinking, wow, this is gonna be quite a thirsty boy. Um, and that is certainly the case. So moving on to the next point of brakes. Now there's only a single disc up front and that's kind of a niggle for me as well, because why not just go twin disc? It is a big Brembo setup and it certainly is capable of stopping the behemoth bike, but why not just go twin disc and go a little bit more modern with it? I don't know. In any case, you've got a four pot caliper with a 320 mil single disc. And as I say, it's huge and mighty and it works well. But then you've got the rear disc, which is 260 mil with a two pot caliper. In unison, they work great. And the ABS does kick in when you're slowing down and really pushing on the brakes, especially the rear. But overall, it works nicely. And you've got some nice electronic gadgets and gizmos going on there as well in terms of your like sort of traction control bits and your cornering ABS. A few other points here as well. It's a keyless system. So you've got the keys in your pocket and you've got the steering lock up here next to the steering head bit. And that's how you're gonna basically operate the fuel tank as well with a key. But again, jury's out whether a keyless system is necessary. 
because the key's got a place to live, so it could just live in there to turn the bike on and off and have the steering lock. But they've gone the option of having a keyless system, which for the most part operates well. You flick the bike on and it will search for the key, find it, and then you can fire it up as soon as it gets into ready mode. So absolutely fine with the keyless system. So I'll chuck in a few pros and cons here as I round up the video. Now, pro for me, this is a typical Harley Davidson and the motor is fantastic. It's really cruiser friendly and you can ride this about in town knowing that you're riding that Harley Davidson that everyone's going to be looking at because it certainly is a head turner especially in this vivid black which is the sort of standard color option I really like it looking like this so that's it the style the way this bike rides is beautiful as well and it, because it's so unique there's not really much out there that has this same rider ergonomics and feel especially with that front tire and once you get your head around it I really enjoyed it. So I can imagine riding this in California is gonna be great fun. And that Revolution Max engine is just beautiful, really works nicely. Negative points for me, if only it had a bigger tank. The tank looks huge, but it's only 11.8 liters. And when you're riding this about how I imagine Harley Davidson would it intend, you're gonna be drinking through the fuel and you're probably gonna get about 80 miles per tank. So that means stopping to fill up quite often. Next negative is gonna be the gears. Sometimes it just feels a little bit off. Um, I wish it was just a little bit more streamlined and a little bit more seamless to flick through the gears. Again, Harley Davidson fans might be up in arms in the comments saying, but that's just what it's all about. Don't get me wrong, it's not too bad, but just wish it was a little bit simpler. Final point is the suspension just being way too firm. I know you can customize it and set it up, but because there's such little travel to play about with, it just feels like if you were to take this two up with some luggage on, like maybe some soft pannier bits on the left side, I just feel like you're not really gonna be able to tour for too long before you A, have to fill up, or B, just get a sore ass from jumping up and down and landing everywhere. Just wish it was a little bit longer in the suspension travel market. But in any case, this bike has been fantastic to ride. Of course, this is the first impressions. We're gonna have the ride review with the Final Thoughts shortly to follow, so stay tuned for that. But overall, this bike's been great fun. I've loved riding it. The Harley Davidson Sports Dress is a work of art in my eyes. If I could afford one of these, I'd probably put it in the garage, but I wouldn't go to this as my only bike. I'd only add to it. And when you're looking at adding to your garage with a 15K bike plus, Maybe not quite, but certainly love the design of it and I really like the way it rides. So it definitely turned my head at least. So give that a consider if you're in the market for a cruiser. If you fancy watching something else, why don't you give one of our top 10s a go? We've got top 10s on basically everything. So see if there's something there that takes your pick or takes your fancy. Like the video, comment down below to let us know what you think of the Sports Stress and subscribe as always. But thank you so much for watching. My name is Alex. Ciao and I'll see you on the next one.